this May, I spent three weeks in Africa, in Tanzania, Rwanda, and Uganda as part of a CRISP project to improve the productivity of common beans. In that region, most of the soils are, you could say, naturally degraded. They're simply geologically old soils. So that creates big problems when you're practicing subsistence agriculture and your family is dependent on one small plot of land. Here, we can go to a grocery store and have nearly any food you could name, not only from the U.S., but from around the world, nearly any time of the year. There, each family grows the large majority of their own food. So doing research that is both quickly usable and usable by normal people who are growing their own food is very important. Most farms would have a few chickens, maybe ducks, in order to provide eggs and to help clean up the agricultural wastes. And there were some goats and a few cows, but it's not very efficient to produce human food protein by way of livestock, particularly if you're feeding them grains or other materials that humans can eat. So beans are a much more efficient way of producing that high quality protein. For farms that border along a lake or even a river that hippos live in or frequent, it's not uncommon that people may lose a part of their field or even a whole field to hippos coming in and just taking the crop. Hippos eat a lot and they are going to eat what they want to eat. This project is aimed at not only breeding beans that are just more productive, but that associate well with rhizobial bacteria that provide nitrogen fixation. This class of bacteria live inside the legume roots in nodules and they're able to convert gaseous nitrogen into ammonium which then can be used by the plants to produce protein. Common beans are tremendously important in the African diet so improving bean production and improving the availability of nitrogen for that production can have an impact on the amount and quality of food that's available. There are rhizobia that live in the soils, and as part of this study, we'll be identifying many of the native rhizobia that are cooperator sites in Africa. And we're also looking at the possibility of developing or using already available inoculants. And that would mean selecting one or a small number of strains of those bacteria dramatically increasing them in number in the lab through culture techniques, and then distributing them back out. Some of the areas we're researching are relatively flat or rolling, and you can use large equipment. In other areas, it's very steep hillsides, and all of the labor has to be done by hand. All of the sites are quite different. Some are on very poor degraded soils, some of them are clay, some of them are sand, some of them are nearly rock. Uh, some of the soils were actually very good. So the beans that are produced are different in different areas also. There are two main types of beans, the pole or climbing beans and then the bush beans. Climbing beans can be a lot more productive, but you have to have enough rainfall to support that growth. Pole beans also need poles to grow up, and that requires a lot of human labor and just a physical pole. I do have a grad student who's working on the project who's doing work partly on the bean studies, looking at which rhizobia are inoculating or colonizing different genotypes of beans. And he also has an interest in the sociological aspect of the study. So he'll actually be going to our cooperator sites in Africa this fall, and he will be asking some initial questions, including are people using rhizobial inoculants or have people used them? Would they be willing to? Does it fit into how they're managing their beans currently? 
Also asking what's the infrastructure that can be used to produce and get inoculants to the farm so that they can be used. But we're also really interested in uh, just the acceptability of using inoculants. The difference between looking at the videos I shot and the memories in my head <laughs> is primarily that there are children everywhere in reality. The population density is very high, the life expectancy is very low, so about half of the population are children. It really pounded home the importance of this kind of work. We're talking about sustaining people's lives here.